The Prime Minister recently stated again that there wouldn't be any military base, but I guess it's just a question of time when there would be one. I guess that's probably the main purpose of China, right? Uh, it is, of course, we, we had um, a joint um, decline, uh, both from, from Beijing, but also from Honiara, so capital city of Solomon Islands, that there won't be any military base, because really that would mean uh, that uh, Solomons are... Uh, at the side of, of Beijing. Uh, but then again, uh, when we do not know what is it all about, it's all about the money. So so US will send enough money to somehow balance the, the Chinese influence, then we might succeed. But but as, as we as we uh, said a few minutes ago, uh, US presence is too little too late, I would say. Uh, you've been visiting and observing those countries for quite some time. I I want to quote my guest I had yesterday. I was interviewing him as, yesterday. That was a gentleman, an expert from an Australian think tank. And he told me that uh, the the connections and the long-term friendship that, uh, that um, Australia has with those countries would actually prevail. And uh, they have more in common than China with those countries. But then I asked him, if so, if the connections are really so strong, so what is China doing there? How so come, how come, China doing there? How, how come their connections are so good? So could you maybe explain us, do you, do you really think that it's too late and that the Western countries have no chance of catching up? Is it really too late for the West to make it good? I, I hope not. I hope not. And I do agree with your um, guest from yesterday that... Uh, Oceania countries, they see themselves as part of the West, so Euro-Atlantic um, uh, countries, not Asian countries. They've been always uh, uh, distancing themselves from, from Asia, of course. They, they share uh, the same um, um, set of values. Um, they are um, Christian countries, uh, and so that's another, that's another issue, yes, because of the process of colonization the legal uh, culture is, is um, again, um, very much based on uh, New Zealand or Australian um, examples. Um, so, so yes, uh, as, as you pointed, I, I've been here for a while. I, 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 I've been, uh, like started my, my research on Pacific law already like 12 years ago. So it all shows that those countries are dependent and they want to stay in close connection uh, with uh, US, Australia, New Zealand. But they are very poor. They are very poor. They rely on either tourism or fishery. And tourism was dead literally for three years now because of pandemics. So, and again, when it comes to fishery, who is the bad guy? Chinese with their illegal vessels uh, coming uh, and overfishing tuna. And um, just to tell your audience that... Uh, here in Pacific, the main source and very often the only source of protein is tuna, indeed. So when uh, Chinese come and overfish, uh, people might uh, be left with nothing. So they are very dependent on the, uh, international aid. And when that aid is not provided or is not provided in an enough way from Australia uh, or US, then, of course, Chinese uh, will not wait and step in. Uh, yes, the, the last question, the last topic I wanted to ask you about is the um, Arctic, because again, living in Norway, you, you're definitely more familiar with it than us. And so China treats and describes itself now as a near Arctic state and talks about the polar Silk Road. So do we have another simmering problem? Uh, what What can the West do? Because there is a lot of countries interested uh, in those in those areas it's russia it's china it's also usa canada could you tell us more about this problem yes thank you very much exactly no, norwegians are are very aware of that uh, even uh, we have uh, arctic um, university in in norway so um i say most all of my international uh, colleagues uh, working in in norway they they deal 
uh, with Arctic. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, China and Russia, again, are the biggest threat. Yet, uh, we West, we tend to be very naive. We somehow wait until something bad uh, will come, uh, will happen. And this is very misleading. We cannot uh, do that uh, because exactly making this uh, parallel to the Pacific, uh, we must be present. Uh, we must uh, underline uh, the connectivity, the shared values, the pillars on which our civilization is built on. Uh, because otherwise, uh, exactly, we might have uh, bigger players, that is China and, and Russia, uh, getting more and more influence. But again, it's it's not about political influence. It's about uh, actual um, uh, affecting our, our lives, our freedom. So so this is very dangerous. And we must speak out loud because, as, as you exactly pointed clearly, not so many people um, are aware of that. This is the biggest danger. So, so we must say that uh, we must be present in the Pacific and in the Arctic. Okay, so my last question is, let's say you had a magic wand and you could, you could do whatever you wish. What would be your next steps? How to, how to kind of deal with the problem both in the Pacific and then also maybe prevent any bigger issues in the Arctic? What would you do, let's say, three steps? Oh, that's that's very, <laughs> very good, good question. Um, well, I'm, I'm very pragmatic. So, so I would say uh, social awareness is the first thing because what we observe in also in, in you, you uh, not specific, that, that uh, people are not aware of the biggest threat, what actually uh, will come next after Russian or, or Chinese uh, um, interference. And then when we have a um, very aware uh, society, then we have aware um, governments and uh, people, uh, decision makers. Uh, so, so this is uh, another thing that we should uh, uh, cooperate more closely. And as you are in in Taiwan, that's um, also another thing that uh, people from abroad abroad seriously yes, that yes. people might uh, not uh, yes, perceive yes. that uh, Chinese threat that uh, seriously until something actually happens that was the same case with uh, Ukrainian war right so so again uh, and and lastly as you allowed me to to have those uh, free wishes uh, i always repeat this latin sentence civis pacem and parabellum so if you want peace prepare for war we must not be naive and expect that uh, if we are um, we are okay, we are demilitarized, the, the enemy will do the same because this is in the core of human uh, nature that there always will be struggles, uh, crises, wars. Uh, so, so we must be alert, we must be aware and prepared. Thank you very much for your time. My pleasure. And your insights. <laughs>